Hello and welcome to the fourth tutorial in the Kirkus 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at how to set up for Android on a Windows machine. To set up for Android on a Windows machine you need five things to download. Kirkus 2D JS, NDK on 9D, ADT, Apache Ant and Python 2.7.5 or new. I'm going to show you where you can get all of these plus there will be download links to all of these anyway. So you don't need to remember any of the links from the video. So the first one is Kirkus 2D. Dash J F. You can get that from cocos 2 d xorg Once it loads, it's gonna want to click on the download link. Scroll down, get version free from here. I've already got it downloaded. Save time. Then for NDK R9D, you're gonna want to go to a website called Androids.Zone because we're on NDK R9 R10B, I believe. So R9D is no longer available to download directly from their website. So here is a link. Like I said, don't worry, you don't have to remember it from the video. There'll be a link in the description, and you can just download whichever version you want. As they're on Windows, you'll download 32-bit or the 64-bit version. Next thing is ADT, which is the Android Development Tools. Then you want to go to download, I'm going to click download clips ADT, again I've already got it downloaded, Apache Ant is the next one, you just want to go to download binary distributions, download the archive that you need, finally you want Python, you go to python.org, go to download, you can either download free or two. You need 2.7.5 or newer, but you can't have free. Uh, the Cocos 2DX doesn't work with free, so basically you need 2.7.8 or whatever the 2.7 is, whatever 2.7.x is the latest at the time. So once you've got those files downloaded, what I would recommend is putting them somewhere instead of, like the, instead of the download directory or the desktop, somewhere that you know and they can designate as a development directory because we're going to be setting environment variables that link to these directories. So I'll go in a folder called development. A little thing to note, make sure there are no spaces in the direct, any of the directories because this will cause issues. Once you have them all downloaded, extract them all. I've already extracted them to save time. And once you've done that, we're going to want to install Python. So we're just going to click Install for all users. That's a OK. Click Next. And then this one here, add python.exe to path. We want that. And this basically allows us to run the Python command from our command prompt directly instead of opening up the Python command to use it. Once this has installed, we're going to load up command prompt and set up Cocos 2 djs Now that's installed, we can finally open command prompt. We're going to do cd. And we're going to cd to our Cocos directory, which has, actually it's not this one, it's the one within here. I'll just do cd again. As it's the way it was extracted, so you want the one with all these files including setup.py command drag and drop it, click enter now we need to run setup.py see there, you there was a space in py there we go, it's, a, it's asking for a few things it's added the Cocos console root, it's asking for the ndk root for that we can just go to ndk need the folder that includes all these files so we can just drag and drop this on Make sure there's no spaces at the end, click enter. Now it wants the Android SDK root. And for that, you go to ADT, and then you want the SDK folder, not the Android ADT root. Again, make sure there's no spaces at the end. Now it wants the ant root folder, so you just go to Apache ant, and Apache ant and drag and drop the bin folder. Make sure there's no spaces at the end. And then finally, just say restart terminal or restart computer. Usually, just restarting the ter I mean, the command prompt is enough. If not, you can restart the computer as well. And now, what we can do is just generate a new project because Cocos is set up and it allows us to use the Cocos command from wherever we want and create a project. So, I'm going to do Cocos 
and I'm going to do the keyword new, and then we put our project name. I'm going to put tutorial CCJS Windows. I'm going to put a dash p for the package. I'm going to put Windows dash l for the language, and you can only have JS in here. Dash d, and for the directory, I'm going to put desktop. Click enter. Now it's creating our files. Ignore that, I'm just connecting our my Android device so I can run the project in a moment. So now that we have a new project set up right here, what we need to do is compile the project and then run it. So simple as that. So to compile it, you do cd change to this directory, and then in here, what we're gonna do is use the cocos command, use the keyword compile. Dash P for platform, specify what platform we want, which is Android. Click enter, and now it's just going to compile our program. It's just, it might take a few minutes, so you just have to be patient with it. If there's any warning, just ignore them. That's a okay. Once this is done, we're going to use the run command to run our Android project on our Android device. Again, you just have to be patient with it. Little thing to know while I talk about it now, when you make any changes to your project, you're going to need to just compile it using this command. Uh, and then deploy it afterwards but luckily because it's only going to compile the changes you've made the files that you've changed you won't go through all this process again so you'll be literally most likely just a matter of a few seconds so it's not too much of an issue So while it's complete, just a few tips. Make sure you have Python 2.7.x and it has to be 2.7.5 or newer. You need NDK R9D, that's the same with Cocos 2DX, it doesn't work with NDK R10. And what other tips could you use for Cocos setting up in general? Make sure there's no spaces in any of the directory paths or in the names or anything like that. Make sure there's no spaces at the end when you add the environment variables. That is it, pretty much. Just a few standard tips to help you overcome some common errors that you may face. But if you do come across any errors, feel free to message us at support at or you can just comment on this video. Any way is fine. Obviously any minute now it finishes. Okie dokie, it looks like it's about to finish right now. Yep, build successful, great. It's always great when you get a successful build. And so the way to run it, you use the, you use the keyword co cocos, run instead of compile dash p and then you specify the platform which is android click enter
I've got my Android device connected. I am now recording my Android device so you can see it build and run. Device not found. That's weird. Device should have been found. Mm. The device here. Can't see the device. I'm just going to disconnect and reconnect it again. Okay. Okay, I believe it's going to do it now. There we go, we have our Android project running. That little device not found was just a mistake on my part. It was connected for some reason, it didn't pick it up. But regardless, it's A-OK -okay now. So yeah, that's how you set up a Cocos project, Cocos 2DJS project, I should say, on a Windows machine. And also another thing to note, we ran this code first, compile, then run. If you use the run command, it will compile it and then run it. You may think, why would you want to ever use the compile command? You may be developing and you may want to see if you're getting compilation errors, but you don't want to deploy it yet. So it's a great thing for that like, instead of going through, compile, then run all that process again onto the device, then going back to your development machine, you can just see if it compiles. Okay, now that we have a project set up, let's just go over some of the stuff that we have in our folder. The first is the res folder that we're going to go over. In here you put all your resources, so images, audio, that kind of stuff. The next one you're going to need to deal with is the source folder. And in here is where you basically are going to be programming your game. The app.js is what you saw. Resource.js allows you to add the resources so you can easily access them using basically a keyword. The main.js, which is right here. This is the entry point for the application. For the most part, you won't be dealing with this. You may use it at the start to set up your project, add a few resolution policies, set the resolution and so forth. In frameworks, we have the Cocos 2D, the runtime source, so you got the project Android, iOS, a lot of this stuff you're not going to be dealing with, the runtime you're generally not going to be dealing with. In here you get the APK if you want it. And then in tools, again, these are stuff that you don't need to deal with. So the main things are res and source, and may and um, Possibly main. That's only possibly. A low note. And a low note. All the links for everything that we downloaded will be in the description, so you don't need to remember it from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonosystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for the source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching. And I hope you have a great day. Also, one little thing to note, in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at setting up a Cocos 2DJS project before the web. Bye.